Today, we're talking about the controversy surrounding Melanie Martinez and Timothy Heller, and how the singer's history of concerning allegations is being brought back up. After her former best friend recently posted this viral TikTok, explaining the massive wave of hate she received back in 2017, after sharing that she was essayed by Melanie, with things becoming so dangerous at one point that she was ultimately forced to shut down her music career. But I pulled together all of the details and context that you need to know in order to get caught up on this situation involving Melanie Martinez and Timothy Heller. Today's story was sent to me by Louis Vuitton Bagel, Dia Sophia, j and Zoe. If you ever come across something you think I should cover, don't hesitate to DM me on Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok. And if you want to catch the next story I cover, please consider subscribing. But even if you don't, thank you so much just for watching. Now let's get into it. This is Melanie Martinez, a 29 year old singer from New York City who became famous after appearing on season three of the singing competition show, The Voice. However, over the past seven years, some extremely concerning allegations have been tied to her name. And just recently, they've all resurfaced again after a TikTok was posted by the original person making the allegations. But before we go through that, let's quickly recap everything that's happened in this timeline so far from the beginning. First, this is Timothy Heller, a singer and former best friend of Melanie's. Back in November of 2017, Timothy said this on Twitter. What if I have my own story of abuse, but I'm scared to ruin the person's life, and I still love them in an effed up way, and the public still loves them, and most probably wouldn't believe me. A few weeks later, Timothy opened up more about the situation by tweeting this on December 4th, 2017. When I wrote this story about my assault, I initially wasn't going to name the abuser, but I think it's important for you all to know this is about Melanie Martinez. The tweet includes four images of text that describe the incident in further detail. Big content warning for people that are sensitive to discussions about SA. The statement begins with Timothy saying, they were R-worded by their best friend Melanie and felt they had to keep this secret for years. At the bottom of the first image, she mentions that Melanie let her down at the lowest point of her life. And at one point, she made Timothy apologize for having an extreme panic attack because it ruined her night. And Timothy stresses that there were endless nights like this. On pages two through four, she explains this happening. One night during a sleepover, she became increasingly interested in my sexual preferences. As someone who had previously been through sexual abuse, sex is hard for me to talk about. I was obviously uncomfortable, but she was my best friend, so I tried to be open about it. The conversation never seemed to end though. I had to work very early in the morning. She began asking me while in bed if I would have sex with her. While being incredibly uncomfortable by this offer, I attempted to laugh it off. I had a boyfriend at this time, and she knew that. Quote, he doesn't have to know, it's not a big deal. It went on for hours, asking me why I didn't want to, that it would be fun. I repeatedly said no. I had work in the morning. I just wanted to sleep. I was exhausted. I attempted to sleep, but was kept up the entire night by my friend begging me to sleep with her. It seemed strange, but she was my best friend. I said no, and I thought we could move on. The next night, unfortunately, went the exact same way. Regardless of my response the first night, she was not giving up. If she had gotten the hint, she didn't care. I was exhausted. She convinced me to smoke weed, and since I have a hard time saying no to her, I complied, thinking maybe then I'd be able to just fall asleep and avoid the situation altogether. The same conversation began to happen, continuously trying to convince me it was going to be okay and it would be fun and feel good. I would say, my boyfriend would be so upset. I really need to sleep. I have work in the morning. I said every form of no I could think of. As I lay praying to fall asleep, she began touching my arm. I allowed this to happen. Maybe she'd give up. This went on for maybe an hour. I got increasingly uncomfortable. I started giggling, saying that it tickled. I, in no way, wanted to make this a sexual situation. Quote, can I just do this? Can I just touch your arm? Can I just touch your boobs? She began bartering with me. All I wanted to do was go to sleep. She began talking about the appearance of my boobs and begged to just touch them. We didn't have to do anything else. I was so exhausted and confused and high and belittled, I just allowed it to happen. This led to her touching the rest of me. I never said yes, I said no repeatedly, but she used her power over me and broke me down. Just so there is no confusion, I was molested by my best friend. 
I lay still, in shock, completely not reciprocating. I hate speaking so bluntly on this because it makes me extremely uncomfortable. But she performed oral sex on me, and then I was penetrated with a sex toy without being asked. That's what happened. The bottom line that I need to always remind myself is that I said no for two nights straight. It doesn't matter that I didn't resist during the action. I had been broken down. She knew I didn't want to. I made that clear. I didn't scream at her. I didn't force her off of me. One, because I loved her. Two, because I just wanted it to all be over. We never talked about this night ever again. While it completely messed with my head, there was no way I could have been R-worded by my best friend, right? Our friendship ended because she decided she didn't have time for me anymore, to worry about me anymore. She cared too much about me. It was holding her back. During the rest of the statement, Timothy expresses her worry about coming out with the story, believing it won't have the same impact as if a man shared the same exact experience. Following this, less than 24 hours later, Melanie responded on Twitter and claimed that Timothy never said no to any of her advances. I am horrified and saddened by the statements and story told tonight by Timothy Heller. What she and I shared was a close friendship for a period of time. We came into each other's lives as we were both starting our careers as artists, and we tried to help each other. We both had pain in dealing with our individual demons and the new paths we were forging, but I truly felt we were trying to lift each other up. She never said no to what we chose to do together, and although we parted ways, I am sending her love and light always. Pretty weird to respond to somebody saying they didn't consent to you touching them, by just claiming they never said no. I mean, just the fact that she had a boyfriend at the time means she definitely didn't say yes, but since she didn't say no, I guess it must have been fine. But Timothy responded to Melanie's tweet the next day on December 5th, during an interview with Newsweek for an article covering the situation. According to Heller, 20 minutes after she posted the first tweet, Martinez tried to contact her. It was the first time Heller had heard from her in more than a year. I started sobbing when I saw Melanie was calling me, and I blocked her, Heller said. Martinez then tried calling Heller's boyfriend, Mikey, and sent him several text messages asking him to put her in touch with Heller. In Martinez's text messages, which Newsweek has read, the 22-year-old singer says she recently dreamed about Heller, and that inspired her to get in touch. Martinez also suggests the services of a healer named Raven, which Heller said she found insane and deeply insulting. Timothy also specifies that the night everything first took place was June 25th, 2015. After this, things took a darker turn, as many fans loyal to Melanie started to go back through Timothy's old Instagram photos to put together a timeline that invalidated Timothy's story, an act that was supported by Melanie a few days later on December 10th, 2017, when she posted this follow-up tweet thanking her fans for revealing Timothy's false statements. I understand how hard it could be to see my side of the story, considering no one with a heart would want to invalidate anyone speaking up about this topic. I want to thank my fans who took the time to research the timeline, analyze past Instagram photos, and question the story being told, which reveal her false statements. I trusted so many people in my life who took advantage of that trust for their own personal gain. Please know that my intentions with everything I do in my life are always pure, and I would never be intimate with someone without their absolute consent. Since this point, over the next seven years, Timothy Heller was mostly radio silent on the internet, likely due to the mass amount of hate she was receiving because of Melanie's response. However, just a few days ago, on July 19th, she came back and explained everything in a six minute long TikTok posted to the account Frick My Life 500. Here's how Timothy starts the video. Speaking out against my abuser ruined my life and I'd like to talk to you about it. I'm gonna be reading something I wrote it's not particularly well written, but I just needed to collect my thoughts. Whether you know who I am or not, I ask you to please listen to my story. If you do recognize me, then you haven't heard from me in a couple of years. That's because I was effectively run off the internet. You also may have heard that I admitted to lying or that it was proven that I lied. Neither are true. Speaking out against my abuser ruined my life. After this, she goes through the timeline of events that we've covered so far. Then adding this. After my initial statement, describing in detail what happened, my abuser issued a statement in response. She used the sentence, she never said no to what we chose to do together. While I did say no, in many different ways, this sentence was actually quite validating for me to hear. She clearly didn't understand how consent works, and she admitted that something took place between us. I wish it ended there. 
Following this, she explains the mistake she made when providing the date of the incident to the Daily Mail media outlet, saying that she remembered an old photo that was taken right after the date of the incident. So she went back through her camera roll, then found the photo and gave them the assumed date but she didn't realize that it was a screenshotted duplicate from a later time. So this led to her giving them the wrong date, which led to Melanie Martinez fans comparing the date to Timothy's Instagram photos, claiming that she had to be making up the whole story. Since based on her Instagram, she was seemingly not with Melanie during that time. Ultimately, this is what made Melanie tweet out her second statement, thanking the fans for seemingly disproving Timothy's whole story even though this is just a minor mistake and shouldn't invalidate the whole experience. But the TikTok continues with Timothy responding to that statement from Melanie. After this discovery, she released a second statement in which she thanks her fans for researching the timeline and analyzing past Instagram posts, which reveal my false statements. Unfortunately, this was enough for 99% of her fans to take what she said as truth and deem me a liar. She then describes more hate she received after this statement went out which only added to the trauma. The events after this are so much and so overwhelming, it's hard for me to recount. She ended up releasing essentially a diss track about me with lyrics perpetuating the idea that I lied about all of this for fame. I was a small musician at the time, and after speaking out, gained tens of thousands of followers. While there were some supporters, the majority of the followers were people who actively hated me. I suddenly had thousands of hate accounts dedicated to me, thousands of dislikes and negative comments on all of my music, and completely ridiculous fabricated stories of me being posted online. Timothy goes on to explain how these people calling her a liar flooded all of her social media outlets and opportunities with comments claiming that she lied about being essayed. This cut her off from practically every single sponsorship and brand deal. And things only got worse because these same haters would leak her home address and family's phone numbers regularly, saying that this forced her to stop pursuing a music career. This then led her to try to get a start in sex work. However, she talks about how that was quickly ruined too. I started doing SW in an attempt to regain some autonomy, but that was taken from me as well when people who hated me hacked the account. I was just trying to move on. My adult content was being spread and mocked by the people who hated me. Every single one of my social media accounts was hacked, including my email. The only thing they didn't get into was my bank account. Over the next minute and a half, Timothy explains just how severely her mental health has been shaken by the situation and how it culminated in her deleting all of her music related socials a couple years ago just to get away from the hate. Then she wraps up the video with this. I didn't do anything wrong. I spoke the truth. If you're familiar with my story, you may have also heard that I admitted to lying, and I can assure you that never happened. There were photoshopped images spread around of a confession that never happened because I have nothing to confess. I never lied. You may have also heard that I accused other celebrities of this, which I can promise you never happened either. There's so many other terrible things that people have made up about me that I'm not going to dissect and defend right now, but I was successfully gaslit into thinking I was a bad person who deserved this. I am so, so scared to speak out about this again. There's a high possibility that I won't receive any support from this and people who hate me will target me again and I go back into hiding. I ask that if you are someone who is under the impression that I lied about this, to please hear me out. Please think about her contradicting statements. Please realize that there's no one on earth who knows what happened that night besides me and her. And even the smallest possibility that I could be telling the truth should be enough for you to not want to risk ruining an innocent person's life in this way. I'm completely exhausted from begging people to believe me for years now. I'm not sure what I'm hoping will come from this. It's gotten to be quite humiliating to beg people to care. But if you haven't heard my story before, thank you for hearing me. And I could really use your help in rewriting the false narrative of who I am and what happened to me. At this point in the story, we still haven't seen a response from Melanie Martinez regarding this video. However, once she does address things, I may do an update on the second channel. But now that you're caught up with everything that's happened so far in the situation involving Timothy Heller and Melanie Martinez, I need to know, what do you think about everything? Are you a current or former Melanie Martinez fan that's been following the allegations? Were you previously aware of this ongoing situation from 2017? Please let me know that along with any story updates or things I missed down in the comments. If you wanna get caught up with even more internet drama and news, subscribe to either channel to catch the next story, or check out any of my recent videos. Thanks for the love on the new second channel video. 200,000 views on a 4,000 sub channel is ridiculous. Also, thank you so much for making it all the way to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.